Welcome everybody back to another episode of the Fraud Alert. My name is Marin Balog. I'm a forensic accountant and fraud examiner. This isn't really a fraud alert because it's been in the news for some time now, but I'm talking about Alex Murdoch. Uh, I've been watching this docuseries called Murdoch Murders, a Southern Scandal. And um, I got to tell you, as a father, it really hit me hard, at least the first part, part one. But if you're not familiar with who Alex Murdoch is or his family, uh, let me just give you a quick update, okay, or a recap, if you will. Um, Alex Murdoch's family um, established a very well-known law firm in South Carolina about, um, I think the year was 1919, so it dated back about four generations in the Murdoch family. Um, and this family, over time, um, became solicitors, okay? They're, they're attorneys, and they're also known as solicitors. And, um, well, turns out that over time, um, they gained, you know, influence um, with local officials, judges, courts, cops. So there's elements that indicate, uh, I would say, bribery and corruption. Okay, something that the docu series talks about just a little bit. You know, it, it always hints at these that the family had influence, but mainly they focus a lot on the murders and the mystery surrounding such murders. All right. To continue, the docuseries also kind of missed out on the importance of the financial crimes that occurred, right? And I think I think it goes to say that obviously, you know, it's a docuseries that's here to entice us, right? This this docuseries literally has everything you could imagine: love, tragedy, um, you know, murder, mystery, whatever whatever it is that 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 you can think of. It's there, right? This is like a a uh, psychologist's dream to, you know, case study to look into. And, and um, you know, even directors are like, you can't make this story up. This is just way too much. It has way too much, right? So for me, obviously, my interest is this was a great watch. And from a father's perspective, it was hor horrifying. But um, from a forensic standpoint, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued by by the by the influence and by the trust that was instilled in this family for so long and nobody questioned what was happening and and why things were happening the way that they were okay i highly suggest you guys go ahead and watch this i'm no longer going to promote it but let's talk a little bit about alex murdoch all right if you've been keeping up with the trial you understand that there's a lot of um you know there's several murders um or or circumstances of death that is being investigated that connects that family to those deaths. Okay, but nonetheless, let's just go through just a few financial crimes that 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 have been have been brought to light. All right, so here we have this is Alex Murdoch. Obviously, he didn't look like this when he went to prison, but this is what prison does to you, right? So here, this uh, Associated Press article is speaking specifically about money laundering and drug drug crimes. Okay, but let's let's just understand what happened. Okay, so Murdo wrote four hundred and thirty-seven checks worth about worth approximately two point four million dollars. Okay, to Curtis Eddie Smith, who cashed these sums of money over eight-year period. Okay, apparently this money, without reading any further, apparently this money was utilized in a drug scheme. Right. A distribution of narcotics I believe it was oxycodone it says that illegal activity included a distribution network okay for the painkiller oxycodone according to prosecutors who did not specify any other possible crimes right so the 2.4 million apparently is only only contributed towards the narcotics network all right it's the 16th indictment against murder on charges ranging from lying to police and trying to arrange his own death to stealing. See, I'm telling you, this story has everything. So the same guy, Curtis, I believe Curtis Eddie Smith, was the individual that Alex Murdoch hired, right, to kill him. Let's read, and I'll explain. Lying to police and trying to arrange his own death to stealing from clients to arranging a $4.3 million in wrongful death settlement for a housekeeper who died. Okay, it's too much to read. Okay, so this is what happened. He embezzles $2.4 million regarding this narcotics, you know, drug circle, whatever you want to call it, okay? The distribution of oxycodone. A housekeeper 
of his also dies. $4.3 million settlement with his insurance company was, was, uh, was claimed. So he received $4.3 million, which he promised to the children of this housekeeper. The children never saw a dime of it, okay? But yet he ended up with $4.3 million, okay? And on top of that, he's trying to also, what this, what this paragraph does not mention is he arranged his own death, right? In order to receive a $10 million insurance claim, life insurance claim for his son Buster, right? So after all this occurs, the, the, the deaths, right? That are mysterious and connected to his family. He also arranges for his own death so that, you know, it could be called a murder. That's, this is just, you can't make this up. All right. So, so far we have what? We have insurance fraud. We have a little bit of a check fraud, wire fraud. Let's see. There's other frauds here though. Okay. Let's just read through some of the other stuff here. All right. I want to see what else did he do? He went through. Okay. So I, I can't find it here, but I'll explain what happened. Another article says, I believe it was this article. Another article also said that he was stealing from his law firm and his law firm clients. Okay. Initially, what he was doing was he was writing himself a check, say for a payment, I believe. He was paying himself. And then he would tell the law firm, well, I lost that check. I need another one. And in hindsight, nobody ever canceled that check. So he was able to double book payment to himself. Right. So he would cash one check, the new check. And then months later, cash the other check that he lost and therefore receiving double payments, okay? Um, in another way, there was also expense reimbursement fraud where he would expense, um, you know, he would expense to the client some, 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 some things and the client would have to pay for them, right? So this is an expense reimbursement fraud, okay? So he would get paid for those. And... And that's about it. But I want to read you guys a, a quote here that kind of nails down what what was happening, okay? And I love the way that this attorney puts it, okay? He says, Alex's financial crimes are nothing more than a Ponzi scheme, okay? And all Ponzi schemes work in the same way, okay? I have to continue to steal from new people to replace the money I've stolen from old people. And this is from the attorney, Ronnie Richter, Okay. And he's representing victims of the Myrtle's alleged financial crimes. Okay, and he continues to say, all Ponzi schemes end the same way. Sooner or later, it's like musical chairs. The music stops and someone is without a chair, right? The person without the chair is often the one looking for his money. Where's my money? And suddenly there is no money to give. And therefore, the whole house of cards falls. Okay, and then here it says, and that's exactly what happened with Alex. The music stopped. And he ran out of places to get money and all of his financial crimes were exposed. That's, that's, that's literally, you know, this attorney put it very well and um, was able to explain what Ponzi schemes is um, pretty straightforward. And essentially, this happens with everybody. If you look at Madoff as well, you know, um, we have to say this. Let's just say it like this. How did these financial crimes continue? Okay. And... I can simply say this, you know, one of the largest variables here that you have to realize is trust. When there's too much trust placed in one particular individual, right? There's no longer any oversight. There's no longer any monitoring, right? You could say that those are in place, but are they actually established and are, are, are those controls working, right? So the law firm he was allowed to write these checks or request those checks without any question. Okay. So I'm not blaming the victim, but once when there's trust, you don't expect this to happen. Okay. Look at Madoff. And I'll explain. Let me just go a little further. We look at Madoff. Madoff started his Ponzi scheme within the Jewish community. Why? Well, because it was a word of mouth situation. Okay. Okay. One person trusts Madoff, and that trust gets spread through referrals, okay? So once people hear of 
how great Madoff is, you know, you expect to be able to trust that individual because, you know, your best friend or your close friends trust that individual as well. And you believe that your friends are also a good um, a judge of character. Okay. So this is what happens, right? But because the Ponzi scheme can't necessarily exist for far too long in a small community, eventually Madoff had to also branch out. Now, with, the, with, the, with Alex, Alex's Ponzi scheme, if it was truly designed as a Ponzi scheme, Alex's Ponzi scheme couldn't last long anywhere. Why? He's in a much smaller circle of clients. He's in a much smaller firm. His reach is only so far that the circle can go until the Ponzi scheme is, 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 is found. Okay? Madoff was able to go for decades, decades long. This Ponzi scheme probably went, you know, a decade at most. I don't know. I don't I don't have the financials in front of me. But nonetheless, the question begs to differ. How do these things continue to occur? occur? And the answer, you know, in hindsight is always I trusted the person. So anyway, food for thought. Please think about what's going on. Give the docuseries a, a watch. It's, it's, it's truly mind-boggling as, as to how these things can happen and how people can be influenced through corruption, bribery, persuasion, influence, power, money, greed, the list goes on. And yet these things do influence uh, the decision makers and how people respond um, to unfortunate situations. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'm signing off 11 minutes and 49 seconds. Thank you guys. Bye.